Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Kavre, a couple that loves to play board games. That we do. We also love birds. We do. And conveniently, there are a lot of bird games out there. But I think what really, really skyrocketed the birds into this, uh, bird theme into this board game world is actually the game we're going to be talking about today. Wingspan! Wingspan. This game is designed by Elizabeth Hargrave and illustrated by Natalia Rojas and Anna Maria Martinez Jaramillo and Beth Sobel. It is published by Stonemeyer Games. Wingspan is an engine building game for one to five players and essentially the theme of this game is you're a bird enthusiast and you're going to make this wildlife preserve where you're going to introduce a bunch of birds into your ecosystem. The way you'll do this is you'll put together a flock of birds that benefits you the most. You'll have an opportunity to bring these birds into your preserve and create this engine that will optimally score you the most points because at the end of the game, if you're the person with the most points, you'll win. Now this game has won multiple awards, including the Kennerspiel des Jars in the year that it was released. Mm -hmm. It's also sold over a million copies in just under three years. And it is probably one of the biggest modern board games of this time. And today we're gonna talk about everything you need to know about Wingspan and all the expansions, including the new Asia yeah. expansion and the nesting box. Exactly. Exciting. But we'll start off with the base game and let's jump right into it by giving you an overview of how to play. You begin by setting up. Resources, bird, and resource cards and dice will be prepared on the board. A ghoul board will be chosen and tiles will be drawn. Each player will get a player mat, eight action cubes of their color, two goal cards of which they'll choose one to keep, and five bird cards and one of each resource. Now before starting the game, each player will select a combination of cards and resources so that the total is five. Wingspan is played over four rounds. During each round, players will take turns until all their action cubes have been used up. On your turn, you can use your action cube to do one of the following. Play a bird, or go to one of the locations, gain food, lay eggs, or draw bird cards, as well as activate any bird powers within those locations. Now when playing a bird, you'll place your cube in the column you wish to play the bird in. Sometimes you'll have to pay an egg or eggs in order to play that bird. You'll then pay the bird's food cost, discard the tokens, and place the bird in the corresponding habitat. If a bird has a power that reads, when played, you may take that action now. You'll then move your cube to indicate that you've completed your turn. Now gaining food, laying eggs, and drawing cards actions work in a similar fashion. You'll play a cube in the leftmost empty space in the row you wish to activate, complete the action, and then proceed by activating any brown powers on your birds, right to left. In the forest, you will gain food. For each die icon you'll choose, you'll remove a die from the feeder and take the corresponding resource from the supply. If the dice in the bird feeder ever show the same resource, you may choose to re-roll all the dice. Some of the slots also have a card to food bonus conversion, which allows you to discard one card to gain one additional food token. You'll then complete any when activated actions right to left, moving your cube. In the grassland, you will lay eggs. You will lay the number of eggs indicated on in the space your token is on. You can lay eggs on any combination of birds as long as you adhere to the egg limit on each card. There's also a food to egg conversion that can be optionally utilized once to lay an additional egg. You'll then activate any birds within the row right to left. Now one thing to note here is that birds have different types of nests. They are potentially important for bonus cards and end of round scoring. Star nests are wild. Now we've got the food, we've got the eggs, now we need the birds. In the wetlands you can draw bird cards. You will draw the number of cards shown from either the face up cards or the bird deck. Again, you can utilize the conversion if the space has one to draw an additional card. You'll finish the action by activating birds right to left. As always, all the bird powers are optional. Now birds you acquire will have different powers. Brown are when activated. These abilities will generally acquire you more food, eggs, or cards, or allow you to score by either cashing food on the cards or tucking cards behind the bird which will both be worth victory points at the end of the game. you also see birds with once played and once between churns powers as well. Now you'll keep taking turns until you used all your tokens. At this point, the round ends. At the end of each round, you'll remove one of your action cubes and score at the end of round goal. 
You'll then discard all the face-up bird cards on the tray and replenish them. Rotate first player and begin the next round. Now, as you may have noticed, by scoring a round goal, you'll lose one of your action cubes, which means the rounds will have one less action for you to take each time. Now, at the end of the four rounds, you'll score. You'll get points for each of the face-up bird cards on your player mat, for each bonus card you've scored, round end goals, and a point for each egg, each food token cached on a bird card, and a card tucked under a bird card. The player with the most wins. Will your wildlife preserve be the most luxurious five-star bird hotel? Wow, bird hotel. Hotel for birds. That could be a good game. <laughs> well, what makes this game so legendary? What makes it stand out? Why do you think it's so popular? There are a, a lot of reasons I think this game stands out. Mm -hmm. The first thing I'll say is the unique bird cards. Mm -hmm. And this is like just an art piece mm -hmm. and a graphic design choice that they've made where they've put a different bird on every single card that is introduced into this game. Mm -hmm. They've also done their research providing different uh, facts, fun facts about the birds, um, where the birds are, and the accurate representation of habitat, where those nests for the birds might happen, and the uh, wing biology name. Oh yeah, and, and, the, wingspan. and the wingspan. Yeah, you can't because, forget about the wingspan. Course, That's the name of the game. Exactly. Absolutely, I think there's so much detail and production that has gone into just each of these cards. Like you said, they're an art piece in itself. And although the mechanics are slightly different, there you will see some similarities too. So you do yeah. get familiar and it's really easy to jump into the game as well. Mm -hmm. One thing that this game does too, and this is a bit later in the, in the later editions, is there's a swift start pa pack, which is essentially a guide on how to play the game and how to take the first four turns that will teach you to play right away. It is in the base game. The it is, but, game... but it, it didn't start getting published with uh, the base game after a while. Okay. But now all editions, sh all the new editions should have it. And it's a great way to teach the game because mm -hmm. there's a lot of rules to digest. But in the Swift Start Guide, you basically just play and you learn as you play, which is a wonderful way to welcome more people into the hobby. Exactly. And that's another point that makes it easy and probably a good reason why it's mm -hmm. a legendary game. Production quality as well. There's a yes. bird feeder that you throw mm -hmm. the dice the in dice. and the dice feel yeah. very nice and wooded and chunky, which is great. Those little egg miniatures. They are not edible and they do look like mini eggs, but yes, they are absolutely gorgeous and they add so much to the game. Mm -hmm. And in general, this game is just an art piece on the table. You're really drawn to it. The cover is beautiful. It's very welcoming and very different for a lot of the themes that exist in the board game world. Mm -hmm. Now we've talked a lot about the components, the mm -hmm. art, the design and choices that they've made in this game, but what about everything else that is going on in this game mm -hmm. and why does it make it fantastic? The mechanics! Yes, exactly. Well, we often hear the term engine builder mm -hmm. and I think that is a little bit daunting, daunting and stressful. <laughs> what does it mean? Yeah. But I think this game does such a great way of demonstrating it because right in the beginning of the game, you can do four things. You can play a bird, draw cards, lay eggs, which you can't really lay eggs because you don't have birds yet, mm -hmm. or can, get resources. Yeah. But as you play cards, all of a sudden you can do more. Exactly. And you can actually see, and that is the engine in itself, is you playing cards and being able to do more as the game progresses. Mm -hmm. And the cool element about this game too is the rounds are shorter and shorter as the game continues. Yes. So yeah. the game starts out a little slow and then it gets more and more exciting with each and every turn because you're able to do more. Yeah. And I think that leaves me coming back and many others coming back as well. I will say that the rounds aren't necessarily shorter, you just have less action cubes. Yes. And that's a that's good correct. point to bring up because when you are playing this game as an engine building game, it because it sounds daunting and the mechanic can sometimes be a little bit stressful, the way that they've set up this game is you move your cube from right to left along the action that you're taking. Mm -hmm. And that ease of play, just following your cube from right to left and doing the actions that are on the cards makes the engine building seem very smooth, not as stressful, and there's not a whole lot of major combos that happen in this game that flood the brain to make you even more stress. Flood the brain. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that's a really good point. There's not a lot of, and there's not a ton of decision making too that you'll have to make. Like you have the four choices. Where are you gonna play your action cube? What gets you the most points? Or how can you plan to get the most points? Exactly. And that leaves it really exciting. As well as having the round end goals mm -hmm. really drive some of that too. Because all of a sudden if the round end goal is to really focus on maybe 
this element of the board, then everyone's going to just be trying to do that. And that's a great way to guide your game. Exactly. So essentially what we're trying to say here is that Wingspan does a good job at using the engine building mechanic in a smart and strategic way, but also simplifying it so it's easier for anybody, anybody who's interested in playing board games, to be able to pick it up quickly, start the game swift, and just kind of get their engine growing. Exactly. The so, last point... Okay. The last point... Is... Is that I just want to talk about the ranging strategies. Oh, that's what I was going to talk exactly. about. Exactly. Because there is a lot of different ways you can go about the game. You can play birds in three different areas, which build your engine stronger in those areas. Mm -hmm. But there are other cards that allow you to move birds, that allow you to uh, interact with other areas, or maybe provide you things that you would get if you played in another area. The example I can think of is maybe you have a card in the forest, when when you're gaining resources, you actually also get to lay eggs, which you wouldn't be able to do unless you were in the plains. Yeah, those cross cards are so effective mm -hmm. and so powerful, but I think to that point is every game is very different because of the cards that you draw. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cards in this game a and lot. the likelihood of seeing all of them in one play is very slim. Mm -hmm. So the fact that is is you're diving into the adaptability yes so you're really looking at what do you have and how can you build the best strategy out of what you have and as soon as you're done you want to come back for more because all of a sudden there's more verse to explore more strategies to explore and that's what makes this game so great exactly but speaking of more birds let's dive into the expansion starting with the european expansion european expansion where is it right here <laughs> So let's dive in and see what the Wingspan Europe expansion is all about. Let's take a look at what comes with the expansion. There'll be 81 new bird cards, 5 new bonus cards, 5 new goal tiles, additional automa cards, a new score pad, more food tokens, and a custom tray with a lid. The biggest addition you'll notice with this expansion is round end bird cards. These cards will provide a variety of actions that you can take and utilize at the end of each round. You'll also notice that some cards will have alternate costs as well, noted in the text instead of the food. In general, there's an introduction to many new European birds and some slight additions in mechanics. So as you can see, this expansion just adds much more to the game. There's more yes. bird cards, there's a new power you can pay attention to, new bonus cards, new round goals. Essentially just leveling up Wingspan and creating more opportunities for different combos and different strategies. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing about this, uh, or about all of the expansions I guess, and uh, we'll, I'll talk more about the strategies and the cards that come along with it, mm -hmm. but every expansion comes with another set of colored eggs. And this one provides you with some purple purple eggs, and I absolutely love it. And there's a purple tray in this one yes. as well, the card tray. Yeah, to add more of the cards, which is, again, like one of the big things that come along with this uh, expansion is there's more cards. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of strategy, I think what really makes this expansion honestly like perfect for expanding your game mm -hmm. is there are a lot more strategies that you can go along with, and they're, they've taken time to kind of readjust and put in certain cards that help make strategies in the base wingspan not as strong. Okay. So there's a bit of balancing that goes on and I'm always appreciative of that. When it well, I think it's also diluting the cards too. Yes. Yeah. Now it's almost double the amount of cards you have. So you may not get the two cards that really go well together. Mm -hmm. So now you have to really explore and find different ways of connecting the dots and creating the strategy that works best for you. Yes. But generally, if you really enjoy Wingspan and you want to level it up and have more variability more. within the card play, <laughs> I think this is the way for you. Because there's not a ton of mechanical changes. There's a new type of card, but it's very similar to the ones between turns because it's round yeah, end. It's round, yeah. So uh, it's not a ton to wrap your mind around. So that's Wingspan Europe expansion. Next, we're going to talk about the Oceanic expansion. And here's the box. <laughs> Wingspan Oceania expansion. Let's dive right on in. In the Oceania expansion, you'll find 95 new birds from this region, new bonus cards, new goal tiles, yellow eggs, and a new reference tile. 
A new bird ability is introduced called Game End Abilities, and instead of round end bonuses, these will provide game end bonuses in a variety of different ways. You'll also be introduced to flightless birds. These birds have star symbol on their wingspan and are essentially wild when it comes to wingspan. They always satisfy wingspan conditions in a predator's power and can be treated as having any value for bonus cards. There are also new cards that refer to adjacent birds, which are any cards with sides touching, orthogonally adjacent. The biggest change with this expansion is the introduction of a new resource, Nectar. When playing with this expansion, you'll replace the five base dice with new dice provided, as well as give each player a new player mat so that Nectar can be accounted for. Every player will begin the game with a single Nectar. Nectar will be used as a food cost for many birds across the Oceania expansion. It is also considered a wild resource. However, when bird powers refer to a specific food type, Nectar is not considered a wild food. Anytime Nectar is spent, it'll be placed on the spent Nectar space in that habitat. At the end of the game, players will score additional points for having the most and the second most Nectar in the spaces. Lastly, you'll need to remember to spend your nectar wisely, because at the end of each round, you'll have to discard any remaining in your pool. Now, where the Europe expansion really scales up the game in its traditional fashion, Wingspan Oceania really turns it on its head. Yes. You have a new player mat and a whole new resource that can act as yeah. a wild. So there's a lot of variety of strategy that you can really dive on in. There's also a lot of ways that you can utilize some of the new board actions, such as resetting the cards or resetting the dice, the foods. The food, the resources. Because yep. it's always very troubling when the food comes out and it's not what you want. So having the ability to reset, fantastic. I love that. I want to see more of that. Yeah. So this expansion really does change the gameplay quite significantly. Exactly. And the biggest point that I would uh, kind of highlight here mm -hmm. is the dilution of cards is we talked about it in the European expansion where there are a lot of cards that get added to the game and sometimes you aren't able to get to the bottom of that deck. This way, when they've added the mechanic of being able to refresh those cards, you might not always get through the whole deck, but at least there's an option for you to be able to refresh and maybe adjust your strategy based on the new cards that are coming up rather than having to rely on picking up the cards that are already visible. Mm -hmm. And now there's yellow eggs in this one, which yes, is really fun. Of course. There's end of game birds now. Yeah. So oh, yeah, that's the one that. Yeah. Yes. There's yeah. so there's scalability now because you can mm -hmm. play with everything, mm -hmm. and you can see birds from th three half of the world now, <laughs> pretty much half the world. Pretty much half the world. Uh, yes, maybe yeah. a little bit less, less than half than, the yeah. world, <laughs> but there's a lot of birds you can see. Every card is still unique, and it's pretty cool because there's flightless birds in this one too, yes. which we talked about earlier. Yeah. It is also like worth pointing out that I think I talked about this in the graphic design of the cards is that they have maps at the bottom left, I believe, that show the country or the continent mm -hmm. that the bird is from. And in the first game, it's just like North American birds. Mm -hmm. So you only ever see that North American map highlighted. And with the European and Oceania expansion now there, you've got three different uh, maps that you can look at. It gets really exciting to be like, mm -hmm. oh, uh, I have a diverse range of like continental mm -hmm. birds. And there's crossover as well, so yeah. you'll see a variety of that. So exactly. More learnings, more education, and with that is Wingspan Oceania. Finally, let's talk about the Asia expansion. Let's dive right on in. Now the Asia expansion is quite unique as it's a standalone expansion for one to two players. This means you can acquire the expansion and play the game without having the base game. Now what comes in the box? Well, it has 90 new bird cards and everything needed to play the game, with a bird feeder board and a bird board instead of the larger bird feeder and tray, as well as a duet map and tokens, new end of round goal tiles, as well as a flock turn order dial and a round end board. In this expansion, you can play solo or two player game with everything in the box or add it to the base game and other expansions to play a game for up to six to seven player count. Let's go over each of these additions. In the duet mode, you'll have a duet token placed on each of the spaces on a brand new illustrated map. When playing birds in these spaces, you'll place the token into the duet map, matching the bird. 
This means a space has to correspond to the habitat you've played the bird and the symbol must correspond to the bird you've played, whether it be a nest, a food token you used, or the wingspan of the bird. Now only one player can use each space and these spaces will correspond to round end goals and final scoring, where each player will score the largest contiguous group of their tokens, receiving one point for each. Now flock mode accommodates for six to seven players. You'll be using the expansion with the base game and any other expansion to set up. You'll break out in two groups of three for a six player or one of three and one of four for seven player. These groups will stay fixed for the game. Now you'll be playing all together, but using the flock turn order dial, you'll take turns simultaneously with another player in the other group. You will not move on until both of you have finished your turn. At round end, you'll still score points based on the goals and ties are now friendly, so you may acquire the same amount of points if you end up with the same outcome of the goal. There's some clarifications for expansions and rules of cards, but generally, you'll only interact with your group's food and cards, while still being able to play with a larger group and compete to be the overall winner. So the Asia expansion adds very a variety of different things compared to the European expansion and the Oceania expansion. And I guess we could just like dive right in and start talking about it. The first thing I would highlight is that this game is actually a standalone. Mm -hmm. You can get this game, play it as is, and it's great for a two player game. Mm -hmm. Well, it's only uh, a two player well, game. It is, yeah, exactly. One or two player yeah. game. Yeah. Which is perfect because if you're a person who's interested in trying out Wingspan, maybe you and your partner are often looking for two-player games, Asia Expansion or just is a, a solo game yeah, too. It's mm -hmm. a great place to start, mm -hmm. especially if you're kind of leaning towards maybe not getting the other games. This is a good test run, I think. Yeah, and you don't really know. So this is a great entryway into the Wingspan universe, mm -hmm. especially because you can grow from this point on. Yes. And I think the way that they did this was really clever because not only is it a standalone one or two player game, but it's also an expansion to increase the player size to six and seven. Mm -hmm. And initially, everyone's mind is six to seven player wingspan, that's mm, gonna take forever. Yeah. Well, I love the mechanic that they integrated here. Having the flock when having simultaneous actions happen is just so clever and I can't believe more games haven't done it. But yeah. now you're essentially playing two different games with two different sets of components and cards, but you're still playing all together and you're still mm -hmm. waiting on the other group and at the same time. So there's that sense of cohesion. And it's also quite legendary to sit around a table and play a seven player game. And we need to make that happen. Of wingspan with a lot of birds. That's pretty great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, like Ilya said, is they make it very smooth mm -hmm. and mechanically like swift, I guess, mm -hmm. which kind of is a segue to my next point. But the way that it's able to like pass through people and you're basically mm -hmm. having two, two turns going on at once, I think is very clever mm -hmm. and provides a way to involve more people, but not speed or slow down the gameplay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, speaking of swift gameplay, this game also provides a swift player start guide. And it again walks you through the first couple of rounds of how you should be um, learning this game, playing this game, mm -hmm. and those decisions that you could be making. And I think it's very clever from a perspective of getting more people involved mm -hmm. in games. Well, yeah, and for the, that's for the duet mode. Yes. Yeah. So it's not for the flock mode. For the duet mode, if you're buying this alone, and this actually makes a ton of sense because this is. It looks like this is the expansion to really start with a game with. Like mm -hmm. You start with Wingspan Asia as your introductory to see if you even like the game solo or in two-player, and then you almost scale up. But having yeah. that quick start pack to really teach you the game and kind of have the same essence as the base game, I think is very clever. Really like to see that. Exactly. And then, of course, they've got special birds that are new birds from mm -hmm. the Asian continent. Mm -hmm. um, they have... I don't think they introduced a new no. uh, type of card, but there's like a variety of different cards that end up being round end game and uh, you more see a little bit of everything There's a lot of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, which is perfect because, mm -hmm. again, it provides that ease of entry into every other mm -hmm. expansion and base, like Wingspan, that you would come across. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think Wingspan Asia is the great starting point for everything because you yeah. really yeah. You get to know everything. Mm -hmm. And with any expansion too, with new birds come slightly new powers, there's slightly new mechanics that get introduced, but all of them are fairly self-explanatory on the bird, which again makes this game really welcoming. Exactly. So that's the Asia expansion. Mm -hmm. Now, there's three expansions, a base game, 
That's a lot of box. So what are we gonna do about that? Exactly. Well, Stonemaier Games has come out with this amazing giant <laughs> nesting box. <laughs> Woo! That allows the game to fit all in one. All in one. Exactly. And for future expansions as well. Yeah, because now we've only covered four continents. There are still three more. There's still three more. Maybe four. How many continents exist? Seven, I thought. Geography is tough. Well, the big box essentially comes with a really handy organizer, more component trays, ways to really organize your game to make it super easy. It comes in various trays, so you can just Slides lift up out. Uh, and essentially set up the game quite quicker as well. Mm -hmm. And generally, I love having it all in one place. It's quite legendary. The art in it is beautiful. So if you're looking to acquire all the Wingspans, if you love the content, I think this is probably a necessity at this point. Yeah, I'm really There's excited that they planned ahead with this box. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite part, is they knew they were gonna come out with more games or more expansions, and they've included that in the nesting box. Now, um, will it all fit will is it the all question. Fit? Most likely. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, so I'm really excited to see those new, the next expansions come out, but of course, we've got a lot of game in one big giant nesting box that is enjoyable enough as it is. But the idea with this video is we wanted to highlight what everything is. Oh. So we've talked about the base and the three expansions, <laughs> and that's really the exciting part about Wingspan, is it's just this l growing beast of a game. Beast of a game. That a bird beast? Bird beast of a game, exactly. Well, one last thing we have not mentioned is the original game actually does have a solo mode. And the yes. solo mode is very clever. It's done through the Tama factory. And there's also variations of the solo mode in the European expansion mm -hmm. and the Asia expansion as well. So yes. there's a lot of, if you're a solo gamer, there's a lot of solo content in this game that is bound to leave you wanting for more. Exactly. I guess that kind of leads us to our last few points here. We've kind of talked about what makes Wingspan legendary, what makes it amazing, but why would somebody want to start, maybe start playing Wingspan and how? or grab those expansions? Mm -hmm. Like, what are our recommendations for that? In general, if you're trying to introduce more people to the board games, if you want to wow them with a beautiful table presence, with mechanics that will dive a little bit further than some of the other board games, then this is a great game to introduce individuals to. Mm -hmm. It will leave them filled with fun bird facts. It will leave the engine building uh, spark in there. Yeah. And generally, it's an experience that you'll want to have again and again on your tabletop. Exactly. And with the three expansions, I think that there's a lot, um, a lot that has been added to the game, but not in a cumbersome way, mm -hmm. so it's not super stressful. You don't have to worry about those over analyzing the rules that have come into the game. They've made it quite easy with how they've introduced the expansions and it just makes for, again, a, a better experience, a more balanced experience and an overall good wingspan experience. Experience. Exactly. The one thing I will say is that We've kind of covered this in the Asia expansion overview, but if you're a solo gamer or a couple gamer where mm -hmm. you're only usually playing games with each other, then the Asia expansion is a perfect way to start. Mm -hmm. You don't need the base wingspan in, in either of the expansion, the other expansions. Mm -hmm. Asia is a perfect expansion to start on mm -hmm. because it isn't just an expansion, it's a standalone game. I think that's a great kind of segue to almost like a buyer's guide. So how do you start? How do you get into Wingspan? Mm -hmm. I 100% agree with you. I think Asia is the way to go. Regardless if you're even going to have a four player game, having a two player game that you can just try out and test and see if you like, uh, it's just fantastic. Yeah. And the cards are there. So it's even if you buy the Wingspan later on, you can incorporate everything together and it just there's more game there. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think Wingspan, the classic, is always great to have, especially because it has all those aesthetic touches of the birdhouse, of even like the original tray. Mm -hmm. uh, Wingspan Europe is, I think, a scale up, as we've mentioned before. And then Oceania, in my opinion, is if you really want to amp up the compl complexity of the game. Yes, yeah. yeah. Do you have anything, are there any other thoughts? I don't think so. I think Wingspan and Stonemaier 
are doing a great job at introducing these expansions in a clever way that make people want to come back to this game more and more, which makes it an even better game to get involved with. Mm -hmm. That's my overall thoughts about this game. I love the engine building and whenever we end up coming back to this mm -hmm. game, I always remember how easy it is to just play. The flow of the game is fantastic mm -hmm. and it just feels honestly right. And that's generally all you need to know about Wingspan. Exactly. There's so much though. There's so, so much. Hopefully this video is helpful. In the next video, Tyler will read each of the cards and tell you about their ability. And attempt to make the noise that those birds make. There is a really fun companion <laughs> app that if you scan the birds, it actually does the call for them. Yes, but how cool would it be to if have you did it? the Tyler edition of this app? Well, I guess we'll have to start <laughs> kickstarting that. I don't know. <laughs> We'll give you some voice acting lessons. <laughs> well, for our question of the day, what is your favorite bird? I've answered this question before, I'm fairly certain. Well, my answer has changed, so you can go. It's the otter. The otter is not a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, it's the peregrine falcon. Why? What? Because it has this film that goes over its eyes, so when it like dive bombs to catch its prey, it actually goes fast enough that um, normally the eyes would like not combust but have problems but this film protects the eyes so they keep it open and pay attention to the prey. Eyes are important to keep exactly. so I, I, I like that, I respect yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I think my last time mine was pigeon but I'm changing mine because I didn't have a lot of time to think and I just had to come up with an answer but this time I processed and thought. This time he knows. So the scientific name for my bird is Paris Major and the common name is the Great Tit. And the oh, reason yes. it is my favorite bird is because when I was younger, I was raised in Russia and this bird was always everywhere during the winter. And I remember just looking out the window and always seeing these little fluff balls of birds and they were just the cutest little things. And they give me a lot of nostalgia, so they're my favorite. That is very cute. I well, approve. if you enjoyed our content or if you have any questions around Wingspan, leave a comment down below, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Feel free to hit that subscribe button because, you know, we appreciate that. Mm -hmm, exactly. So along with answering our question of the day, let us know if you're planning on getting the newest expansion coming out or if you're planning on getting the nesting box. Or if you played Wingspan 300 times and you have some learnings to share with us. Exactly. Because we haven't played it 300 times. Not a chance. Do we want to? Yes. That's a lot of times. It's a lot of times. But there's enough birds to make each game variable. Exactly. It'll have to happen eventually. Eventually. Well, have a great rest of your day. Bye.